Ever wish you could reuse a scene in Godot and tweak just a few things? That's exactly what inherited scenes are for. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set one up and Augie's going to help. Let's go. So we will start by adding a Sprite 2D to our scene. And then rather than using the time tested icons, we're going to use my dogs because no offense to the logo, but I think they're more fun to look at. So here is Augie. And we're going to do a couple little things with Augie that will help us identify inheritance when we create that inherited scene. So I'm going to name this dog for starters, because the scene, the class, if that's how you want to think of it, is dog. That's our sort of base class. And of course, we're going to add a script and save. Now, it doesn't do anything yet. So if we were to inherit it, we're basically just extending Sprite 2D. So let's add some functionality. Let's start by printing. We'll say name is ready. And that'll give us an indication when one of these things has been loaded into the scene. I'd also like to mess with the Sprite a little bit. So we're going to do something very simple. First, we're going to start by adding, we'll call this is on. This will be a Boolean set to false by default. And we're going to toggle that on and off every time the space bar is pressed. And what that's going to do is when it's on, we're going to let it run a certain update function to make some changes. In this case, we're going to rotate Augie in a circle. And when it's off, nothing will happen. So first, we'll start in the process by checking for input dot is action just pressed. We're going to do UI accept and we'll invert is on. And this will just make is on false if it's true and true if it's false. And then we'll also print every time it toggles, we'll be able to see that value. So if I run this, we've got Augie not doing anything yet. It says dog is ready, which is what we're expecting. If I hit the space bar, true, false, true, false. OK, that's working. Before we go any further, of course, we need to turn this into an actual scene or else we can't extend from it. So let's save branch as scene. Dog is fine. And now that we have our dog scene and our dog script, I can actually name this specific instance, Augie, and that'll mean it'll say Augie is ready. And now at this point, we can actually create an inherited scene and see some of this stuff magically come over. So we're gonna go to scene, new inherited scene, and then we'll select dog and we'll hit save. And we'll call this one dog2. And then back in our main scene, we can add an instance of dog2. Let me go back here. Now we have two Augies, but we don't want two. I mean, I love Augie. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to have two Augies, but I have two doggies. We're going to make this one Maui. We're going to move him over here. And we're going to name him Maui because he is more than just a dog. And now if I run this, you see Augie is ready and Maui is ready. So we can already see dog2 is inheriting from dog1. If I go into the Maui scene, you'll see it has this script on it. But we don't actually want the exact same script on both. That's going to kind of defeat the purpose of inheriting. So what we're going to do is right click on this and go down to extend script. Dog2 is fine and we'll create. And you'll see now we get a fresh script and we can see that it's extending from dog. And I did this on purpose because I wanted you to see this. I like to name all of my classes and I like to do that before I extend them because I think it's a lot cleaner. So let me just close this and let's give this a class name of dog. And now when we go through that process of extending dog two, I know it's hard to tell I'm in dog two, not dog. We can actually name this dog two. And when we extend the script, dog2 is fine. Now you'll see it extends dog. That's a lot cleaner. And I will save. Now, this is the interesting part. If I run this again without making any changes, you'll see now it's only saying Augie is ready. Why is that? Well, because now that dog2, the scene that inherited from dog, has its own ready and process functions, which are overwriting dog the script that it's extending from. Just by virtue of being here, it's going to replace that. So if I delete this function and run it again, now we get Augie is ready and Maui is ready because Augie defines the Augie is ready print statement. And then the Maui instance, which is extending that class, is not overwriting that. So it's also getting that print statement. So let's jump back to dog for a second. Let's actually pull this out because I want to demonstrate something right here. So we're going to pull this out into its own function. We'll call it, say, my name, put that in here. And then in ready, we'll say, say my name. And if I run this, it won't look any different. Um, 
But what's interesting about this is now because this belongs to the dog class, um, just like this variable, both of these things are now accessible within this class. So this variable exists in both dog and dog2 because it's inheriting. One is inheriting from the other, as does this. So pulling this out gives us access to that. You know, this wouldn't make a lot of sense. But you'll see if I actually start typing, say, my name, I actually get that autocomplete. Um, and just the same, I could also say print is underscore on, and there's that variable. Again, we're in dog2. Let's maybe name this just so it's a little easier to tell them apart as we're switching back and forth. We'll say dog2, right? Now, if I run this, you can see Maui is constantly saying his name. It's constantly telling us that it's false, okay? So before we continue on, let's actually get rid of this because that's pretty impractical. Let's add some functionality uh, to Augie here. So let's create a very simple function called update, which will do whatever we want it to do when is on is on. So we'll say if is on, and all we're going to do in this update function is slowly rotate the sprite. We're actually going to pass in delta. So now in process, I can add update and give it delta and run. Of course, it's not doing anything, but if I hit the space bar, now Augie rotates and Maui doesn't. Again, Maui is not rotating because we have process in the extended class, which is overriding it and saying do nothing at all. So if I delete this, it's a very useless class right now, but we'll put some more stuff in here in a second. If I hit spacebar, now they're both rotating. Lovely. Okay, what if we want to add some functionality to it? So we can come into dog and let's put our ready function back. But now let's say when it's ready, we want it to say print, hello, I'm a dog because that's super useful game design, right? But we've already learned that if I run this, I'm just gonna get this. I'm not gonna get this as well as the say my name call. Now I could type say my name here and get them both. And sometimes that's what you know this requires. But there is a method called super that we can call which will say, I want you to call the ready function that is defined by the class that I'm inheriting. But once you've done that, also run this. And we'll actually call this, we'll say named Maui, right? So when I run this, what do we get? We get Augie is ready, Maui is ready, but then Maui also says, hello, I am a dog named Maui, lovely. So let's do the same thing with process. And now we're gonna add some functionality. So we can come in here and we can call super, and now we're getting an error. Uh, and this is something I wanted to show you. It knows, Godot knows that the super method that we're calling takes an argument of delta. So we have to, oops, we have to also pass that in or else it's not gonna work. And now we can define our own functionality that will actually add to the rotation that we're inheriting from dog. Let's just add a couple of variables here. So we're gonna add this. Basically what this is gonna do, it's gonna slowly scale it up and down. But since we're calling super, it's also going to continue rotating. So if I run this now and hit the space bar, now you can see Maui is scaling up and down, but he's also still rotating. And that's making me dizzy, cute as it may be. So now I just want to do a tiny bit of refactoring so we can look at one more example and then we will get out of here. So if we jump back over to dog. We've got these two lines that are responsible for toggling whether the update runs, basically. And... Uh, you know, that might be something that we want access to in other parts of our logic. So we're going to pull that out, call it, you know, toggle update, right? And then we'll create a function called toggle update. Because remember, once we pull this out into its own function, when we inherit, this is now available to the class that's inheriting. So if we come out here, now we could do something like just as an example, instead of only toggling whether it's on or off uh, when we hit the space bar, if we add a line sort of like this, if the rotation of this sprite is about 180 degrees and it's on, toggle it off, which we can now do because we have access to this new toggle update function. So lastly, if I run this, I hit space bar, they start rotating, he starts scaling up and down, and then now he's hit 180 degrees rotation and stopped because we have the ability to access that toggle. Meanwhile, Augie continues to spin and hopefully doesn't throw up, which is a thing he does even when I don't spin him. I think that's about going to do it. Hopefully that clarifies how inherited scenes work. If you have other questions about this or additional topics, comment down below or hop over to the Discord and ask us in real time. As always, 
please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I will see you in one of these next videos. Take care. Ever wish you could reuse a scene? Nope, you're in the way of the microphone. <laughs> this is harder than I thought, peanut.